بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين I welcome all the brothers and the sisters and the youngsters who are watching this uh, live stream on YouTube uh, and today's uh, lecture is going to be about mistakes that people commonly make uh, during fasting and uh, this lecture by the way is going is is this at the same time being recorded with a, a different camera so that will be inshallah placed on the channel after we uh, finish the live streaming now to start up with the uh, mistakes there are many things that people commit by mistake or out of ignorance um, and therefore, they're not held accountable. It's not held against them to having committed that. Because the Prophet wasallam said, My ummah is being pardoned for things that they do uh, mistakenly, ignorantly, or forcefully. You're forced to do something. You won't be held accountable for it. You do it forgetting that this is haram or this is mandatory, then you won't be held accountable. And you do it, you do it because you simply are unaware of the uh, Islamic ruling in this matter and therefore Allah will not hold you uh, accountable or won't hold it against you. <coughs> now, one of the most common mistakes uh, people make during Ramadan is not having the uh, intention of fasting, not intending to fast prior to the night or the day rather at night prior to the day of fasting. Now I need to make a, a comment here that some scholars stated that one intention prior to the entire month, prior to the first day of Ramadan, would suffice the person from having to recollect his intention nightly or daily before Fajr. And there's another opinion that says, no, one needs to intend for every day a separate intention. Now to get yourself out of this difference of opinion and to be on the safe side, then one needs to have an intention, a separate intention, every day or every night. Every day I mean before dawn and every night from the night before that. Shaykh Al-Uthaymeen rahmatullah said, simply remembering that tomorrow is a fasting day and that you will fast it is uh, enough as an intention. And the importance of the intention here is that the Prophet sallallahu said, and this is reported by an nasai and classified as authentic by Al-Albani, he said, Whoever does not have an intention the night before, and in another narration, before dawn, before Fajr, he has no fast, meaning his fast will not be valid. So this is an important matter that we need to be mindful of every night. And I say every night, although there is a difference of opinion, just to be on the safe side and get out of this controversy. Another matter is that, and it's saddening, is that people don't get themselves acquainted with, they don't learn, they don't study the rulings, and they don't ask about it, about this act of worship of Siyam. Uh, when you have anything that you want to do, when you're planning to do anything, you go study it. You see the do's and the don'ts in it. If you're making a trip, if you're going on vacation, you start, you go online and you start looking for the car rental and for the hotel, places to visit, the, the weather, the time of prayer, if the person is keen on that. But unfortunately is that the month starts and days pass, half of it passes, and then people start asking, oh, by the way, what would be the ruling if I do this? 
well, you should have asked this, or we should ask things like this, prior to the month, so we don't fall into that mistake. So, this is something that's important. It's not too late. We're only three days into Ramadan. So, it's not too late to ask questions and get educated, get enlightened about the uh, rulings of, of Ramadan, and therefore, assure that your fast is uh, sound. Next point is that they fast those people who believe that fasting is simply refraining from food, drink, and having relations with their spouse. Have not actually achieved the spirit of Ramadan. Uh, the, the, uh, the objective of Ramadan is not to lose weight. The objective of Ramadan is to cleanse the heart, elevate the soul from filth up until it reaches the level of taqwa, of piety. And that takes patience, restraining yourself uh, from bad-mouthing others, reacting to others, or taking initiative and fighting with others. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever does not abandon false speech and acting upon it, then Allah has no need for him to abandon food and drink. Because food and drink are not the objective. So, fasting whilst not refraining from sins. Uh, another form of fasting without refraining from sins is that you see someone fasting but doesn't pray. A sister fasting but does not adhere to hijab. A person fasting and does not give up haram. Or those who fast and break their fast on haram. You see him lighting a cigarette as soon as Allahu Akbar is made. Slow down, what are you doing? Oh, khalas, iftar is, uh, is due now, so this was only during the, the day. And that's wrong. That's haram. In Ramadan and outside Ramadan, and it's severer during Ramadan. Uh, a lot of people don't know that if they eat and drink, forgetting that they're fasting, and this happens a lot. I have one of my relatives once, on his lunch break, went home, and uh, he was fasting a voluntarily uh, fast. It was a Monday, I guess, or a Thursday, I forget now. And his mom said, son, why don't you have lunch with us? So he sat down, had lunch and had dessert and drank tea and then left. And then on the way out from the house, he said to mom, oh, you know what? I just remembered I'm fasting today. Well, that's fine because the Prophet wasallam says, whoever eats or drinks, forgetting that he is fasting, then let him continue his fast because it is Allah who gave him, who fed him and gave him water. So that doesn't nullify your, uh, or invalidate your fast. But some people believe that, no it does because they don't know this ruling. And therefore continue the day eating and drinking. And that's wrong. Well, the second act is what invalidates their fast. A lot of people don't know that using siwak, uh, a toothbrush with toothpaste uh, or even the mouth spray to remove the odor of the, of the mouth is something that does not invalidate the fast as Shaykh Ibn Baz alayhi, stated. Uh, some people believe that, mistakenly believe that taking a shower to cool off if it's a hot day or just for, uh, to, to cleanse yourself, to clean your body uh, that this is not allowed. There is nothing wrong with that. This is not one of the in invalidators of siyam. Uh, medical injections, all types of medical injections, except for the type that is used, used to nourish the body, then that's the only prohibited type. Anything else used as medication does not invalidate the fast, as Sheikh Ibn Baz, rahmatullah said. 
uh, wet dreams during the day when you're fasting, do not invalidate the, the siyam because there's a difference. There's a difference between intentionally going into a major state of impurity, ritual impurity, uh, by the ejaculation of, of uh, semen, and something that's beyond your control, like wet dreams, and therefore wet dreams do not invalidate the fast. And ghusl, having the dream that appears to be a wet dream, ghusl does not become mandatory unless one actually sees the, the semen or feels the wetness in their underwear. Uh, using perfume or bukhur, the scent, is not something that invalidates the fast. There is a difference of opinion in this matter. But Ibn Taymiyyah said, and this is a golden rule, which he depends on or bases many of his opinions on. He says, anything that was commonly needed or practiced during the time of the Prophet ﷺ, and yet the Prophet ﷺ did not include it to be part or to be one of the things that invalidate the wudu, or the siyam, or the salah. Though people commonly did this, then it is not one of the invalidators of that act of worship. Because had it been, then he sallallahu alayhi wasallam would have explained and detailed that. Just like the issue of uh, cleansing the mouth during uh, wudu. He sallallahu and, and sniffing the water into the nose. He sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that this is okay, but then gave a detail as a precautionary measure. He said, don't exaggerate in sniffing the water, lest it goes into your stomach. So there was a need to explain, so, uh, to detail, so he detailed sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Now, if there's a need to uh, go to the dentist during daytime in Ramadan, extract a tooth, uh, remove a, uh, get a filling done, get a root canal, anything. Well, if there's a need for that, then that does not invalidate the uh, siyam. But one needs to be very careful not to swallow anything. And it is better... As some of the scholars said, it is better if this can be delayed until after Maghrib, then it would be better because he will be on the safe side. Uh, people who have asthma and use inhalers or puffers, then that does not uh, invalidate the siyam, as Sheikh Ibn Baz alayhi, said. Uh, some people believe that spouses cannot exchange kisses. Uh, whilst fasting. And this is not true. Aisha radiallahu anha said uh, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to kiss while he was fasting. And this is reported by Bukhari and Muslim. So there is no problem and it does not invalidate the salah, the, the siyam in itself. However, she said, but he used to control himself. He used to be able to control himself. Meaning not to give in and then commit what should not be committed, which is sleeping with the spouse. She said, but he was most controlling over, over himself and his emotions and his desire. So if you feel that you're weak and you can go beyond just the kiss, then you need to refrain. And it's case by case, it's not a general rule. The general rule is what's stated by Aisha, is that he used to kiss, so it is permissible. The next one here uh, is something that reflects weak faith. It reflects, or it's a, it's a dangerous sign for that brother or sister. Some people feel uh, burdened by fasting. They're fasting, 
But they feel burdened. They, f they wish that Ramadan will finish fast. What we don't know, but we do feel it, and we've had experience every year uh, in the previous years, is that Ramadan does pass fast. fast because Allah Azza wa says, أَيَّامًا مَعْدُودًا They're just days, counted days. To give an indication that it's not going to be difficult to fast the month. Just look at ourselves. Today is the, the end of, now it's the end of the third day. That's 10% of the month already gone without us feeling it. But some people, subhanAllah, feel it is too heavy to fast Ramadan. And they just start counting down, oh, 28 days left, 29 days left. Why? Because they want to eat, they want to go back to their desires, they want to go back to, they don't feel the sweetness of the ibadah, of worshipping Allah. They don't feel the, the precious value of drawing near to Allah Azza wa Jal. And thus they deprive themselves from the essence, the spirit of the fasting month and from benefiting from that month. Now, remember few points back, we said that if someone eats or drinks forgetfully, then he's not, he does not invalidate his, his siyam. However, some people see a person during Ramadan, drinking or eating. He forgot, she forgot, especially now in, in home quarantine. One might see his wife, his daughter, his son, his, his, his husband, her husband, her, his father, her father. Any member of the family he forgot woke up and grabbed a glass of water and started drinking and they leave him. Why? Because he's forgetting. Well, no, you're not supposed to leave him. You're supposed to remind him. This is enjoining good and forbidding evil. This is part of that. And therefore, if you see someone who is uh, eating or drinking then you need to remind them. Now, what if someone had intercourse with his or her husband, his wife or her, or her husband, prior to Fajr? Or at night and performed dudu and did not resort to performing ghusl because you have the choice, either or. And then woke up Intended that they will wake up for suhoor, and that's enough as an intention. And then perform ghusl before fajr. They woke up late, or they woke up enough to have suhoor, and the adhan was made, and they did not perform ghusl from janab. Some people mistakenly believe that they cannot fast that day because they started off the day from fajr, not in the state of major purity, and therefore their siyam is invalid. And they eat and drink and they count that that day is gone anyways. Well, that's wrong. Because the Prophet ﷺ's practice was different. He would be junub. And then he would perform ghusl after the adhan. And then go pray and fast. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Some people believe, mistakenly believe, that they can't swallow their own saliva. And that they have, whenever it, it, uh, it formed or developed, then they have to spit it out. That's not correct. Now, another saddening practice amongst people. Some people, to enable themselves, so they claim, to fast Ramadan easier, they sleep through the day. And if they're lucky and not deprived, they would wake up to pray Dhuhr and then go back to sleep and they break, wake up to pray Asr and then go back to sleep until the Adhan is made and they wake them up. Wake up, wake up, it's time to break the fast. It's Iftar time, the Adhan is being called. Or it's time for Maghrib, depending if you live in a country where you can hear the Adhan or not. Well, that's laziness. You're killing yourself, you're killing your soul, you're killing your spirit, you're losing the effect of Ramadan. There will be no impact on Ramadan on you if you spend the entire fasting day without being live and about. You'll miss the chance of dua 
The entire day you're gone. You're knocked out. That's a very bad practice. And it's a sign of weak faith. Others do another bad practice or evil practice. And it's a common mistake amongst people. Spending a lot of time on smart devices, on the laptop, on TV, watching useless things. Now, if you're spending the time on the internet, watching something useful, doing something useful, then that's fine. But a lot of people either watch games or series or movies or just to kill time, to make fasting, the fasting day pass much faster than it should, uh, should be or how they feel about it. And that's another bad practice. And they deprive themselves from a great benefit during that day. That's during the morning. Some stay up all night. If they were praying or reading Quran or asking Allah or mentioning Allah, then that would be great and the reward would be abundant. But they would be wasting it doing everything else other than what benefits them in the Akhirah. And we need to be aware of that and be careful not to fall into this. A lot of people start off with energy. Uh, they start off motivated, we have a strong zeal. They're keen on fasting, reciting Quran, uh, praying Qiyam, Dhikr, everything. And then the curve starts declining as the days of Ramadan go on. Whereas by the end of Ramadan, they're just waiting for Eid to be announced. Why? Because they lost that strength, that zeal. Because anyone who's strong would not want Ramadan to finish. We were in I'tikaf once and it was the 29th day. So the following day was either going to be the 30th of Ramadan or the 1st of Shawwal. So one of the brothers said, Oh, inshallah, tomorrow will be announced to be Eid. One of the brothers said, why do you want to deprive us from another blessed day? Another day where our dua is accepted, is honored, is responded to by Allah. Is that, why do you want to deprive us and you from that? So we need to maintain our hearts to make sure that the zeal that we start off with doesn't decline. And that takes monitoring of the heart and takes effort to strive against this, this feeling. The Prophet وسلم, said that there is a dua, an accepted dua, at the time of breaking the fast. Now the scholars differed whether this meant right before the Adhan is called, the minutes, the last minutes, 10 minutes, whatever, before the Adhan, or is it immediately after the Adhan is made, one it takes a date and starts asking Allah Azza wa Well, at whichever one you become convinced with, because again, scholars said this and scholars said that, so it depends on which one you become convinced with. Don't forget that. A lot of people become preoccupied with whatever they're going to eat, regardless of the food that they're going to eat or drink, and forget that. And they forget to ask in a time that's very precious. Allah is telling us that you ask and I'll, I'll respond now. This is the time I respond. So now you ask and you'll get my response. And because of eating and drinking, we become heedless of that. So we need to be aware. Fasting is a diet. This is how some people see that. A lot of people 
take advantage of Ramadan to lose weight. There is nothing wrong with that. So no one would say, Hazim said, don't do that. I'm saying there is nothing wrong with that, but don't make that your objective. They become preoccupied with this and it overwhelms them from the objective of Ramadan and they, it makes them forget the objective of Ramadan. So don't make the intention to be a diet system or a dieting system. A lot of people are the exact opposite. They make Ramadan revolve around food. They start looking for recipes on the internet, asking others, especially sisters. They start texting each other, emailing each other, calling her mom, her aunt, her friend, her neighbor. What should we, what's the recipe for? Th and spends all her time or his time for planning for food. Planning, and some people plan the entire month in advance. Don't do that to yourself. You will busy yourself with something that's very trivial, very insignificant. You need to busy yourself with the objective of Ramadan. Make sure you achieve that objective in yourself. And encourage those around you to, to achieve it. And don't make Ramadan a month of food. And as a result of that, you'll have three, four men items of the menu on the table. People excessively eat to the point that they cannot stand up and pray Isha, let alone pray in Taraweeh. Which is normal. This is natural when you, when you fill, overfill your stomach. Your blood circulation will slow down and you'll feel low. <laughs> Besides the pain you'll feel in your stomach. Something pertaining to Qiyamul Layl is that some people firmly believe that Laylatul Qadr is the 27th night. As a result of this, they refrain from taraweeh and they say, since we know that the 27th is Laylatul Qadr, then I don't need to pray taraweeh in any night except for that night. And when I get this, khalas, I've got it made. Well, that's wrong. Taraweeh is an act of worship. Qiyamul Layl is an honor. As Jibreel said to the Prophet wasallam, know that Qiyamul Layl is the honor of the believer. It makes you honorable in the scale of Allah, in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal. That's in Ramadan and outside Ramadan. And in Ramadan it becomes more emphasized. It's worthier to perform acts of worship that make you honorable and draw you, make you draw closer to your Lord. 